Hi there, I just wanted to make a quick video to show you an experiment I'm doing at the moment. This is what I get up to when I'm not making educational guitar effect videos. So I've got a little 386 amp here that I've quickly soldered together and it's driving not a speaker, it's driving this piezo um, pickup, but it's actually driving it like it would a speaker. That's then sending vibrations through this slinky, which is one of these. That's then going into this uh, piezo pickup, and then that's going down those wires there through that cable and into my lab amp. And that's creating a lo fi spring reverb sound. <laughs> So if you want to give my experiment a go, you're going to need one of these, which is a springy or a slinky. I'm using a mini one that looks like this, and they're readily available in most toy shops and of course online. You'll also need one of these, which is a 386 chip, and this is a power amplifier on a chip. It does look like an op amp, but it isn't. And you'll note the pinout there of the output is different to an op amp as well. Now the reason that I'm using this is because we need some way of amplifying the signal and driving this piezo in order to push one end of the spring and then the other end of the spring we're picking up with another piezo and feeding it into an amplifier. Now one thing I will say is this is made out of metal and this is made out of metal, and this is made out of metal. So if this touches that metal disc, and then this is connected at the other end, and it's also touching the metal, you'll find that it'll just bypass the effect, because the electricity will just go straight through the springy or slinky, and end up in the output amplifier. So what you want to do is insulate the piezo using a bit of tape like I've done here but you want to really tape up all of this surface. Now remember as you tape up this surface you're also dampening it so it's going to affect the um, level that comes through the spring as well. So it's a balance um, and takes a little bit of experimentation basically. So how have I got mine set up? So first of all I'm sending my guitar into 386 chip and this is set up in its most basic configuration which only requires as you can see here two capacitors and these are both 47 microfarads so two the inverting input is connected to ground the guitar is going into the non-inverting input then I've got my nine volts and ground for the battery connected to pin six and four and then pins one to eight are bridged together. That gives us the maximum amount of gain. That's what these gain pins are for here. And then we've got our 47 microfarad capacitor going from pin seven, which is the bypass pin to ground. And then we've got this AC coupling capacitor on the output before a piezo, which is driving the spring. That then of course is going through the spring. And then on the other end, we've got a very, very simple circuit. We've got a piezo connected to a jack. In my experiment, I just had it crocodile clipped. This is another one that I found in the parts box. And then I just plug my amplifier into this end and it will pick up anything on this pickup. So I've drawn that wiring diagram down here so you can see it. So the guitar jack's here, it's going into the chip. You can see pins one and eight are joined together there. All the grounds are connected here. I'm just using a battery here, and then this is my output here. So this green signal is my audio signal, and then the red of the battery is there. This is all ground with the two capacitors and that joining of pins one and eight there. So it really is a pretty simple circuit to follow. Another advantage of this is if you don't know the 386 chip already, it's definitely one that you should be aware of because it's used in some guitar effects pedals as well as to drive speakers to make mini amplifiers. So give this a go. You may well find that you find a much better way of coupling the 
springy or slinky to the piezo here than I did in my quick experiment. I was just using crocodile clips, as you saw in that part of the video. Um, but there must be a better way of doing it. I think in the past I might have tried to use double-sided tape on something here to stick this onto a guitar or something. That might be a way of doing it. Now I'm looking at this, I'm thinking, what if I double-sided tape that on there? And you might find if you glue more than just half a turn down, if you're able to like glue this together with super glue, so you've got a full circle there and then maybe glue it onto the piezo, making sure it's insulated, of course, from the metal, you might find you get a much better result than I did with my quick experiment. So definitely give it a go and post your experiences below this video. I'd be really interested to hear how you get on with this springy reverb. I'm Stu from Music Technology, happy experimenting, and I'll catch you again very soon.